Our scripture lesson today, as Christine has said, it comes from the Old Testament book of Psalms. Psalm 126, I invite you to hear these words. When the Lord changed Zion's circumstances for the better, it was like they had been dreaming. Our mouths were suddenly filled with laughter and our tongues were filled with joyful shouts. It was even said at the time among the nations, the Lord has done great things for them. Yes, the Lord has done great things for us and we are overjoyed. Lord, change our circumstances for the better like dry streams and a desert waste. Let those who plant with tears reap the harvest with joyful shouts. Let those who go out crying and carrying their seed Come home with joyful shouts, carrying bales of grain. This is the word of God for us, the people of God. Thanks be to God. Amen. Well, I've titled today's sermon, Medicine for a Merry Heart, because I believe there is so much difficulty in our world today as Austin lifted up prayers for so many needs that we need to be lifted up with merry hearts. As I was reading over that psalm and thinking about the joy that the Lord brings to our hearts, I couldn't help but recall a story that a preacher friend of mine shared one day with me. It's about a couple who lived in Minnesota during an especially brutal winter, and they wanted to spend a long weekend in Florida with the sun and the warmth warming their bones. But they both had jobs and their schedules didn't quite consolidate properly for them to leave at the same time to travel for a weekend. They had a weekend free, but they couldn't leave on the same date due to different meetings and schedules. And so it was decided that the husband would go down a day before the wife and get things settled in the little condo that they were renting. And then the wife would follow the very next day. Well, when the husband checked into the hotel, he went straight to his iPad and opened it up and wanted to let his wife know that everything looked great in the, in the condo that they were going to be staying in and to make sure what her arrival time would be. He was in such a hurry typing. You know how that happens when you're texting or typing someone. He just misplaced some letters in her email address. But this is what he wrote to her. He wrote a message to her about being in the hotel. Well, it just so happened at the same time, there was a widow in Houston, Texas. She was just coming back from her husband's funeral service, and she went straight to her computer to check email messages from relatives and friends who may not have been able to attend the funeral service. Well, when she opened up her emails... She immediately fainted. Her son came running into the room to find out what happened. He found his mother laying on the floor unconscious, and he looked at her open computer screen, and this is what he read. To my loving wife from your departed husband. Subject, I've arrived. I've arrived, and I have been checked in, and I see that everything is prepared for your arrival tomorrow. I'm so looking forward to seeing you then. Hope your journey is as uneventful as mine was. P.S. It sure is hot down here. (laughs) Laughter. Laughter. It's an amazing gift that God has given to us. Teresa of Avila, a Spanish nun, said, She who laughs, lasts. Laughter helps us to endure difficulty. And it is said that she looked for novices who knew how to laugh and eat and sleep. Because she believed if they ate heartily, they would be healthy. And if they slept well, it meant that they were free from any serious sin in their life. And if they could laugh, they had the necessary disposition to handle any difficulty that life brought their way. 
Now, my friends, I must admit that sometimes it's difficult for us to find humor in life. There are so many ills and uncertainties plaguing us as a people, and yet laughter is a gift from God. A sense of humor about life can carry us through so much difficulty in life and tough times that we go through. You've heard me say many, many times that my 20-month-old grandson is the sunshine and joy in my life. And he can laugh at almost anything. Laughter just comes spontaneously to him. In fact, I read a survey recently that said, on average, children laugh 400 times a day. And yet, as adults... We scarcely laugh 15 times a day. And I wonder, why is that? Why do we lose our sense of humor and become so serious in life, take ourselves so seriously, and so easily see what's wrong in this world before we see what's right and what brings joy in this world? Christian writer Maxie Dunham has written that he grew up with a religion that was deadly serious. He said all the so-called saints always looked very sad. Think about how many pictures you have seen of Jesus where Jesus looks so serious, where you see the suffering servant Jesus, where you see Jesus with a stern and serious look on his face. And then look at the picture on the front of your bulletin today of the laughing Jesus. For those of you who are watching online, I believe they can put the picture on the screen for you. How wonderful to see Jesus with his head thrown into laughter and a smile upon his face. And yet we don't read in the scriptures about Jesus laughing and yet If you put on your mind's eye and read the stories about Jesus' life, surely there were times that when he was a baby like baby Joe, he laughed and giggled. Surely, as he grew up as a little boy, playing with friends, he knew laughter. And certainly, when he invited the little children to sit upon his lap and bless them, He laughed and smiled in their presence. One of my grandmother's favorite sayings always was, it is better to laugh than to cry, for laughter is the best medicine. The best medicine to help us get through difficulties in life. I tell you, religion, sadly, is not often associated with fun and laughter. Many people stay away from the church because they see it as judgmental and critical and deadly serious. But when we read the scripture passage today, that psalm was written by the Hebrew children as they returned from their captivity in Babylon. And it says that they were filled with joy and laughter And what did it say? It said that the other nations saw their joy and saw their laughter and began to praise God saying, the Lord has done marvelous things for them. You see, when we walk around with joy in our hearts and smiles on our faces, we proclaim to the world that our God is a God who is not filled with grim, but filled with grace. That our faith is a faith of joy and peace and goodness and wholeness. For Jesus himself said, I have come to give you life and to give you abundant life. A life of joy and peace. A life filled with love. I was reminded of how sad it is that so many Christians don't walk around with that joy every day. When I read about old Groucho Marx. 
Groucho Marx, for those of you who are too young to know, is an old-time comedian. And Groucho Marx was getting off in an elevator one day, and he happened to meet a clergy person. And the clergy person came up to him and said, I just want to shake your hand and thank you for so much joy that you have put into the world. And Groucho Marx, without missing a beat, shook the reverend's hand and said, Well, I want to thank you, reverend, for all the joy you've taken out of it. <laughs> that comment tells me a lot about how people view clergy and people in the church. So often we're seen as stern. We're never found laughing. I don't know about you, but I've never heard anyone say, boy, those people in that church, they're a wild and crazy bunch. And yet, wouldn't it be wonderful if they saw the joy and laughter coming from amongst us all the time? If they saw how much joy the Lord brings to our hearts, even in difficulty, there's an old rabbinic saying that is a healthy reminder for most of us. It goes like this. A person will have to give an account on judgment day for every good thing they might have enjoyed but did not. Those words remind me of a proverb. A proverb in the Old Testament that says, A cheerful heart is good medicine, but by sorrow the heart, the spirit is broken. A cheerful heart is good medicine, my friends. And the Gospel of Matthew reminds us that Jesus himself said, Do not look dismal like the hypocrites. Carry the peace of the Lord in the smile that is upon your heart. Remember how on the night before Jesus died on the cross, he sat at table and supper with his disciples? And he told them that they would be experiencing difficulties. He told them that he was about to leave them. Things that they did not want to hear. He told them to prepare themselves for the difficulty that they would experience once he was crucified. And yet he said these cherished words that we repeat so often. He said, do not let your hearts be troubled in the King James Version, the one that so many people grew up with, says, be of good cheer. Be of good cheer. For the Lord has overcome sin, death, and the devil. The Lord has overcome the troubles of this world. For the last word in our faith is always grace. Grace. Joy will come in the morning to those who are weeping, the scriptures say. We need to have laughter, my friends. I shared with y'all last week about the loneliness epidemic that's going on in the world today and how we need to gather together. We need to gather together and share meals together, to break bread together, to enjoy each other's company. And I was very blessed this weekend to be invited over to a dear friend's home along with others. And in addition to the wonderful meal that we shared, we shared lots of laughter. Laughter that lifted all of our spirits. And I just had to reach out to the host and say thank you for an evening that was pure joy being together with one another and sharing the gift of laughter that the Lord gives to us does indeed help us. Help us to tackle whatever difficulties come to us in life. God has given us this great capacity to enjoy good humor. And in fact, I believe a daily dose of good humor and laughter is one of the most precious gifts that we can share with others around us to help them cope with the difficulties in their lives. There was a young woman who was very troubled in life by the difficulties that were taking place. And she went to visit her mother. She was so discouraged and despondent 
She told her mother she just didn't know what to do. She was ready to give up. She was tired of fighting. She was tired of struggling every day. It seemed like when one problem was solved, another one would pop up. It was just an ongoing cycle of difficulties in her life. And her mother said, honey, follow me into the kitchen for a moment. They went into the kitchen and her mother took out three pots and filled them with water and put all three on the stove at the same time. As soon as the pots of water began to boil, she went to her refrigerator and she grabbed a bunch of carrots and placed them in one of the pots. She went back to the refrigerator and she got a half dozen eggs and placed them in a second pot of boiling water. And then she went to the cupboard and she got some coffee beans and placed them in that third pot of boiling water. She sat with her daughter for a while in silence and said, honey, let's just sit here for a moment and feel the presence of God with us. After about 20 minutes, the mother went back over to the stove. She turned off the eyes and she scooped out the carrots and placed them in a bowl. She fished out the eggs and placed them in a second bowl. And then she took the coffee that had brewed from those coffee beans and poured it into a cup. She took those two bowls and that cup of coffee over to the table where her daughter sat. And she said, honey, I want you to touch each one of these bowls and tell me what you see. The daughter looked at the bowl of carrots first and she touched the carrots and she said, well, mom, they're carrots. And the mom said, yeah, but what do they feel like? She said, well, they're soft and mushy. And the mother said, okay, what about the eggs? Take one of the eggs and crack it open. And the daughter cracked the egg open diligently and found a hard boiled egg inside as she anticipated. And then the mother said, now, how about taste this coffee? And the daughter grabbed that cup of coffee and, oh, she breathed in that beautiful aroma and she took a sip. She said, thank you, mom, but I don't understand. Why did you boil all three of these? What is the point of all of this here? And the mother said to the daughter, all three of the objects that I placed endured the same stress and difficulty of hot, boiling water. But each one of them reacted differently to that hot, boiling water. The carrot went in strong and hard and unrelenting. But however, after being subjected to that boiling water, it softened and became weak. The egg had been fragile, protected by that thin shell and its liquid insides. But after sitting in that boiling water, it became hardened on the inside. And the coffee beans were unique, however. After they were in that boiling water, they changed the water. So my dear, I want to ask you, which one are you most like? When adversity knocks on your door, how do you respond? Like a carrot, or like an egg, or like a coffee bean? Think of it this way, dear. Which one am I? Am I a carrot that seems strong, but with pain and adversity, I wilt, and I become soft, and lose all of my strength? Or am I like an egg that starts out with a malleable heart, but my heart changes and I become hard and stiff inside? Does my shell look the same on the outside, but inside I am stiff and hardened against life? Or am I like the coffee bean? When difficulties come and circumstances bring pain and discomfort, when the water gets hot, do I release the inner goodness that God has placed inside of me and change the circumstances around me for the better? 
when the hours of the darkest trials and difficulties come to life. Elevate yourself, my dear. Elevate yourself. Elevate yourself and change the circumstances around you. Find the gift of love and light and humor that God has placed into the world that will give you the inner resources you need to change the circumstances around you. My friends, that's my prayer for each one of us, that we will be like the coffee beans, that we will be so filled with the joy of the Lord in our hearts that when difficulties come to us, we are able to still feel that joy and we are able to rise to the occasion and change the circumstances around us. May it be so for you and for me. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit.